Well, hello and welcome to this English lesson where we're going to talk about the things you see when you look down as you walk through the world, as you walk through life. You can look up and see lots of things but we already did a lesson on that. You can also look down and see a lot of things. So, in today's lesson, I'll talk about I think 27 or 28 things that you will see when you look down including of course, your own feet. Um so, welcome once again to this English lesson where I'll teach you some words and vocabulary that you could use when you look down and you want to describe what you see. The floor. So, I wanted to talk a little bit about the difference between the floor and the ground. So, when we talk about the main things that are under our feet, if you are in a building, we usually call it the floor. If you are outside, we usually call it the ground. Now, there is a little bit of a hitch here, okay? Sometimes when we're inside, we call it the floor but we might when we're inside call it the ground although it's rare. You would never use the word floor outside though. So, if I'm eating a hot dog and I'm sitting at my kitchen table uh and I knock something on the table and it falls, I would say it would fall on the floor. Okay? And then I would pick it up off the floor. If I was outside sitting at a picnic table eating a hot dog and I knocked something off the table, I would say that it would fall on the ground and I would pick it up off the ground. Now, you might when you're inside say, oh, I dropped something on the ground. It's rare though. You can't go wrong. Inside, floor, outside, ground. Those would be the distinction I would make between the two. And of course, I wanted to make a distinction between bare feet and bare feet. So, when you take your socks and shoes off, we say that you are going in bare feet. I'm going to walk around with bare feet today or I'm gonna walk around in bare feet. I guess I could say that as well. Um but he went barefoot. That's another way to describe it. And I just put this in for a bit of laughter. This is of course a bear and those are the bear's feet but it sounds exactly the same. Um I don't walk around in bare feet very often. Um I do in the summer a little bit. I do when I go swimming of course, when I go to the beach. Um sometimes I'll walk around the house in bare feet for a little bit. You know, after I'm done taking a shower, I walk barefoot from the bathroom to the bedroom to get changed. But definitely uh when you look down, you might see your bare feet and not these bare feet. If you see these bare feet, you you should run or not. Play dead. I'm not sure. I'm not a bear expert. Do not Watch these English lessons for advice on how to avoid bears. You might also when you go to someone's house or apartment, see a doormat or a welcome mat. They're sort of the same thing. A doormat or welcome mat can be outside of a house and it might actually say welcome on it telling you that you are welcome to go to that house um but it might not. You might also have a doormat inside your house. When you come in the front door of our house, there's actually a doormat outside and then there's a doormat inside. Mostly because you can then wipe your feet outside. You can wipe your shoes and then you can wipe them again when you come into the house. So, doormat or welcome mat. And then, of course, if you are outside, I think the first half of this lesson is mostly things you will see if you are outside. You might see insects. So, when you walk around here in the winter, you won't see insects but definitely now, we're starting to see insects. Um I saw a few yesterday. Mostly the flying type but you might start to see ants. Um you might start to see crickets. You might start to see grasshoppers. There are certainly a lot of different insects that you might see when you go outside. Um and uh they're good. Even though insects, sometimes we don't like them, they are actually good. They do a job that needs to be done outside. So, you might see some insects. You might see some worms. Here, we haven't seen worms yet because it's early spring but if you dig in the soil, you will find worms. We often, when it's warmer, we'll see worms uh after it rains, the worms come out of the ground and we'll see worms on the driveway or in the grass. We'll see some worms but another thing that you might see if you look down. By the way, 
Worms aren't insects. So, it was worth having a different slide I think for that. Um there's something else and I can't remember but remember this isn't a science lesson. Centipedes and millipedes. We have very small centipedes and millipedes in Canada. Um I don't even know if we have millipedes but we have certainly little things with many many legs. Um and these are probably the one thing I don't like. They kind of I I find them a little bit strange looking and they're not something that I like seeing when I'm outside. I'm always like, uh, they're kind of they too many legs and then they move in a funny way. Now, this is something you might actually see if you look up. I should have put this in the lesson called look up. Uh you might see a spider if you look up. You might see a spider if you look down but certainly if you look up you might see a spider web or what we sometimes call cobwebs. But uh yes, when you look down, there is a chance that you might see a spider as well. And then caterpillars. So, caterpillars are something that we see here sometimes on the ground, sometimes on a blade of grass. Sometimes you will see them if you look up but if you look down, you might see a caterpillar and a caterpillar will eventually go into a cocoon and then come out as a moth or butterfly. So, caterpillars, another thing that you might see if you look down. Gravel. So, when you walk on my driveway, the place where I drive my vehicles, when I drive, when I pull into my driveway, I'm driving on gravel. Gravel is what we call really, really small stones. <clears throat> you might call them pebbles as well but I have a gravel driveway. So, that means that my parents put little t- they bought truckloads of gravel. It's just called gravel and they spread it on the driveway and I even bought a truckload of gravel two years ago and filled in all my puddles. So, gravel is what we use. That's the term we use to refer to very, very small stones. Um it just makes it a nice driveway. Right now, I have some puddles in my driveway. I need to buy some gravel to fill in the puddles. And then, of course, there's something called pavement. So, pavement is a hard black surface. We use a lot of pavement uh to make roads in Canada. Now, a little distinction here. When I talk about pavement, I'm talking about asphalt. Using asphalt to make a road or a walkway and it's usually black. In some parts of the world, you might refer to something made out of concrete as pavement as well. But here, I would call this pavement. You know, um we have a parking lot and the parking lot is gravel but we're going to get it paved. We'd rather have it made out of pavement. Um so, that is just another way to cover a driveway or parking lot or to build a road of course. And then I mentioned earlier puddles. When it rains, if the water doesn't all go away, sometimes it stays in little puddles. I can see a puddle. I can see two puddles in my driveway right now. So, a puddle is simply a little bit of water that remains somewhere after it rains for a day or two or maybe three but eventually, the puddle will dry up. I don't like puddles in my driveway because I don't like driving through them. I don't like um splashing water on my van or having my driveway bumpy because there are puddles. So, I often will buy gravel to fill in my puddles. We also just say stone. Like, I need to get a load of stone but when we say that, we actually mean gravel. Grass or lawn. So, this is a beautiful lawn. Uh many of you appreciate the uh beautiful green lawn in the background when I make videos outside, when I make English lessons outside. Um but grass or lawn is an area where you mow in order to keep the grass short so that it's easy to walk on and you can enjoy being out there as opposed to leaving it Uh, letting it grow really long. So, grass is an area where you use a lawnmower, maybe a push mower or riding mower to uh, cut the grass or cut the lawn so that it remains nice and trim. 
Uh some people will sometimes use the word manicured. A nicely manicured lawn. By the way, a manicure is when you go and someone uh does your nails for you but you can also use that word uh to talk about your lawn. By the way, we use this somewhat interchangeably like, oh, I need to mow the grass. I need to mow the lawn uh or um let's sit on the grass over there. Let's sit on the lawn over there. So, you could use both words um interchangeably most of the time. I think almost all the time. Yeah. Debris. So, I noticed the other day this is where this lesson came from that there is an old house down the road from me and they are tearing it down. You can see there's a lot of debris on the ground here. Debris refers to you know garbage or junk but not household garbage. It's usually from a building or something else. Often after a natural disaster, there's lots of debris. So, if there's a hurricane or tornado and it destroys buildings, we would refer to all of this as debris. There's a lot of debris on the ground. Um you know, the wind was so strong, it it blew the house over and now there's a lot of debris on the ground. So, kind of a funny word, right? Like there's an S on the end but you don't say it. So, lots of debris. Sticks. This is the other reason I made this lesson. I was outside the other day making a lesson for my other channel and I noticed that there were a lot of sticks on the ground. In Canada and in other parts of the world, uh when at In the winter, especially when it's windy, sometimes branches fall off the trees and they land on the ground. So, we need to clean up these sticks. You could still call them branches. You know, they're from the tree but uh, I would probably call these sticks. We need to clean up the sticks. We usually put all the sticks into the field um and then they can slowly decompose over time. In the fall, of course, there are a lot of leaves on the ground. Um if you live in my part of the world, there's a lot of maple leaves on the ground um but as deciduous trees, as broadleaf trees um go through their yearly cycle, they do drop their leaves. So, maple trees, oak trees, all of those kinds of trees, the leaves fall off and you will often see them in the fall or in the autumn. You will see those leaves on the ground. And then of course, there's something called a sidewalk. So, a sidewalk is an area where we've either put concrete or pavement or even gravel down. Usually, a sidewalk is along a road but it doesn't have to be. You can have a sidewalk in a park. So, this park has a very nice sidewalk. Um so, generally, a sidewalk though is beside the road. That's why it's called sidewalk. You drive here and you walk here. It's the sidewalk. Uh, le trottoir, I think in French. Yes. Um so, you have the sidewalk but yes, you can have a sidewalk anywhere pretty much. And of course, you can also just have a path or a trail. Um those are common things to have as well but a sidewalk would usually be made out of something hard. And then just for fun, you might have a banana peel. You might see a banana peel on the ground. Don't slip on it. That's a uh, I've never slipped on a banana. Well, actually, I did once slip on a banana peel. I didn't fall but it was kind of funny because this is a common joke. Uh if you watch really, really old movies like black and white movies, you might see someone slip on a banana peel. Banana peels are a little bit slippery um so you have to be careful when you are walking. And then, of course, there is something called concrete which I mentioned a few times. So, concrete is made by mixing Portland cement, water, stone or sand. I'm not sure exactly. Um and then as it dries, it gets hard. So, we use concrete to make a lot of things. Um this path, this sidewalk is made of concrete. This building, the floor is made of concrete. Even the ceiling is made of concrete and the pillars. If I was to fix our driveway, I would probably pour a concrete pad or a concrete slab in front of our house to park our vehicles on. Um it's just a very cool construction material. Concrete is something that um has really made the modern world possible. Concrete is kind of amazing. 
flooring. So, we're going to talk a little bit about the inside or indoors now. Uh flooring refers to anything that you are walking on when you are in a building or in a house. There are a lot of different kinds of flooring. When you build a house, you have to decide what kind of flooring you want to put in. Probably one of the most common types of flooring is something called a carpet. Now, I do want to distinguish between carpet and rugs. So, a carpet covers the whole room. The room I am sitting in has carpet. So, there's carpet down here. It covers the entire room. But sometimes you have a room and there is a rug in the middle. So, that is the difference between carpet and rug. So, you might choose um okay, I'm gonna put carpet in this room. We're gonna get a nice carpet. Um it's gonna go we sometimes say wall to wall, wall to wall carpeting. But sometimes you have a room and you like the existing flooring. Maybe it's tile or marble or wood and you just wanna put a cozy rug in the middle of it. So, Carpet covers the whole room. Rug, a rug just covers part of it. Um a little difference in the phrasing too, right? This room is carpeted. This room has carpet. This room has a rug in front of the couch. Notice I have to use an article when talking about the rug. Sometimes we put tile down. Now in Canada, we mostly put tile in our bathrooms, sometimes in our kitchens. We put it usually in places where there's a chance that you might spill some water or food might fall on the ground. It's not nice to have carpet in a kitchen and then you spill chocolate milk or something. It just doesn't you can't clean it up very easily. So, often we will put tile in our bathrooms. Our flooring choice for a bathroom or a kitchen is often tile uh, because it's easy to clean. We also in Canada at times will put down hardwood floor. So, you could say wood flooring but generally it's also called hardwood flooring. So, hardwood is any kind of like a lot of times it's maple or ash or oak. Those are the types of woods. Woods that are very durable. Hardwood floors are quite expensive though. So, often instead of putting in a hardwood floor, we will put in a laminate floor. Now, this might look the same but they are different products. A hardwood floor is made of wood. A laminate floor is made of all other materials. It might have some wood in it but the top might actually not be wood. It might be made with plastic. It might be made with sawdust. It might be made with glue and sawdust and some wood. Laminate flooring is cheaper because it's not pure wood. The top layer of a laminate floor might actually be wood but the flooring we put in looks like hardwood but it isn't. It is laminate flooring. I think we sometimes also call it composite flooring but I laminate would be the word I am the most used to. And then we have a type of flooring called linoleum. This isn't as popular anymore. People prefer tile or hardwood or laminate. But linoleum is one of the cheapest kinds of flooring for a bathroom or kitchen. Our kitchen has linoleum in it. It's like a almost like a plastic type floor. It's very, very durable. It doesn't uh, it's easy to clean up liquids and food from the floor um and uh we like it. It's easy to clean. Um we might replace it someday with laminate flooring but for now, we are just going to keep the linoleum. And then you might see a register or vent on the floor. I don't know if the word register is a Canadian or even a local word but this is where hot air comes out of the floor from our furnace. It's most likely just called a vent by most people in the world, English speaking world but we also call it a register. Um a hot air register. That's where the heat comes out of the floor. And then if you're in the city, I just went back outside on you. You might see grates. So, grates are similar to registers but they're bigger uh and they are just a a place where air can come out or maybe air is being sucked in. Usually for the building that is right beside it, you might see a grate. 